It's exciting to be a part of the Chicago Literary Awards. This inaugural event is hosted by the Chicago Literary Hall of Fame, which aims to highlight Chicago authors, old and new, who have captured the essence of our city through their writing and prose. Authors Saul Bellow, Richard Wright, Nelson Algren, Studs Terkel, Lorraine Hansberry, and Gwendolyn Brooks are all highlighted for their contribution to the storytelling of Chicago's rich and diverse history. Let's see who might be willing to talk to us before the event begins. What are you hoping that Chicagoans take away from this event tonight? Well, given that, <laughs> if the same number of people who are down at that insane Michigan Avenue Christmas parade Festival of Lights? would wake up tomorrow morning or sometime, see this show, hear about this, and if just every one of them would buy a book because of this, it would thrill me. Mr. Shea, thank you very much for talking with us. Well, my pleasure. And you, of course, will be accepting the award for Nelson Algren. Yes. I'm an old Life magazine writer and photographer. That's how we met. We wandered around for 10 years taking pictures of Chicago and his world. We didn't know it was anything special. We just documented what we saw in the city, and we both loved Chicago. Yes. I mean, he wrote about uh, the kind of people who uh, woke up looking at the cats, you know, in alleys, and about prostitutes and drug addicts, and they spoke about these tiny specks of humanity, mm -hmm. and they would otherwise have been lost. It's Chicago City on the Make. Of course, Chicago City uh, on the that, Make. And that, that book, has, its title was Born in My 49 Pontiac. God, we gotta do this as a book. This is a book on Chicago. We need a title. Chicago is sort of a wild city, a historic city. It's a city of dynamite. It's a city on the make. It's a city. I said, that's the title. And he said, right, that's the title. So that's how it was born. Mr. Algren had sort of a love-hate relationship with Chicago. Yeah, it got to be more hate than love. For example, he went to the Chicago Library, looked for his own books and they only had one of his books there, so he stole it. You know, just, he was so pissed off. He would have enjoyed the irony of seeing his name on the ward. Sure. Uh, he couldn't have imagined that in his time. Right, and time changes history a little bit, does it not? It always does. It always yeah. does. So I'm here with author Sarah Paretsky. Sarah, thank you for talking with me. You are going to be presenting the work of Gwendolyn Brooks. Yes, and I'm very thrilled to be doing that. I think she was one of the amazing voices of the 20th century. She kept reinventing her, her art in the way that, oh, people like Mozart or Picasso kept reinventing how they presented their art. And she had that, that gift that makes art speak to you of locating the particular, the individual in the middle of, of the general. And I guess just because so much literature is by men about male experience, her exploration of women's lives, nobody has done it the way she has done it. In the late 30s and in the 40s, when she was living in really dire poverty with her husband, um, Henry Blakely, she wrote over a poem a day while she was doing horrible, grubby work. Brooks said, one who chooses to become a poet does well not to think of money. I knew I would always compose poetry whether it was published or not. Her commitment to social justice and the way that she really backed up her beliefs, it's one of the reasons why she's an important model for me. So I'm with Haki Mahabuti. You are, of course, an award-winning poet, and you teach at DePaul University, and you're also a publisher of books. You'll be speaking today on Richard Wright. Correct. And how has Richard Wright influenced your writing? Well, he's uh, mainly responsible for my becoming a writer. Is that right? Uh, at 14 years old, I read his uh, Black Boy, mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of slapped me in the face and told me that I am worth something. And I read Black Boy in less than 24 hours. <clears throat> gave it to my mother to read, and then went back to the library and checked out everything Richard Wright had published at that time. And I was raised in apartheid America, and so we were raised to actually hate ourselves. And so I did not want to go to a white library, an actual white library for a book with black in the title, authored by a black man who was critical of white America. Right. 
But I did go and I found a book on the shelf and put it to my chest and walked in on people's section of the library and sat down and began to read. And for the first time in my life, I was, not, I was reading literature that was not an insult to my own personhood. Right. You know, so it right was critical in terms of my becoming a writer. Thank you very much for talking with me today. Oh, absolutely. There's an author and a creative spirit around every corner and in every alleyway. Join me on the next episode of FearNoArtChicago.com as we get into the unique and fascinating world of the independent artist. Studs Terkel is the guy who came. I don't know if this is still something people do. The night I was born, he came to the hospital to take my dad out for a drink. I don't That's think people do that anymore. Studs. Well, to quote a friend of yours, Tony Fitzpatrick, art is what makes us different than the animals. Oh, Tony stole that from me. <laughs> uh,